AI is taking over the world, but most students are barely using it to its full potential. To get ahead of 99% of students, you have to do things that 99% of students won't do. And while this video won't turn you into a young Albert Einstein, it will certainly give you the tools that you can use to study more effectively. In this video, I'll share with you three AI tools that help me study more effectively in medical school. And the first of them is with scheduling. Scheduling and specifically prioritization are some of the most important things that any student can do to be more productive. I used to do a task review at the end of each week where I would look at all of my tasks and then prioritize them based on how urgent and important they were and then block time to do them in my calendar. The major problem with this was that it was a massively time consuming process and a lot of the time my schedule wouldn't work out perfectly to plan and then it would be such a stress and hassle to fix. The way I use AI to fix these problems is through an app called reclaim.ai and let me show you how it works. Reclaim is a auto scheduling app that essentially prioritizes and puts tasks in your calendar for you. And it has a few features that I find genuinely very useful on a day-to-day -day basis. The first really useful thing about it is that it's able to sync your school calendar to your personal calendar. So a lot of these tasks that you see in red here are tasks that were initially put into my university calendar by a university admin, and then now they've automatically been put into my personal calendar by Reclaim, as you can see here. This is honestly so helpful because it means that I don't need to constantly check my other university calendar because I know that every everything will automatically end up in my personal calendar. The second really useful thing about Reclaim is that it has a habits function. And so as you can see, I have quite a few habits here, like calling my girlfriend, having lunch, um, violin, and then relaxing as well. All of which are things that I want to do on a sort of day-to-day -day basis, but then often I you know, forget to put them into my calendar or I just forget that I have to do them. And as you can see, it basically separates time to do those things every single day. And if I want, I can remove it from my calendar, but it's basically a reminder to prioritize the things that are really important to me. Finally, one of the main functions of the app is that it has a tasks function, which means that you can put in tasks and how long you think it will take you and then it will automatically schedule that into your calendar. So for example, I can put in a task like studying cardiology and then I can set everything that I want. So the minimum duration, the maximum duration, how long I wanna spend on it, say for example, three hours, what it's split up and when it's due and then I can create that and then it'll automatically put that task into my calendar for me to do. So what you can see here is that it put that task as my top priority, but say for example that I wanted to prioritize YouTube work over all of that, then I can move YouTube work to the top and then it will actually prioritize me doing that YouTube work above doing the cardiology study. So if we look at my calendar now, you can see that it has actually put all of those tasks into my calendar and it's put YouTube work in first as opposed to studying cardiology. The other really cool thing about it is that say for example, after my run tomorrow, um, my friends decide to go out and get brunch, I can just put in brunch into my calendar. And then if you give it a little bit of time, Reclaim will automatically reschedule the YouTube work away from that time because there's a clash. I didn't actually have to do anything and Reclaim automatically turned around my schedule for me so that everything would still fit. This is really useful because I find that often on a day-to-day -day basis, I need to be flexible and sometimes my schedules are just not gonna work out. And previously I would have to move everything manually, but now I can just delete a task through Reclaim and then it will automatically find another time for me to do that thing. Reclaim doesn't completely replace my prioritization process. I still use a to do list and my brain to do certain things, but I find that it makes my life on a day to day basis significantly easier and it also really encourages me to stick to my healthy habits. The second way that AI helps me with my studies is by helping me read books. In my opinion, reading is one of the most underrated ways to get ahead in your academic studies because reading books teaches you the soft skills that school never teaches you. These are things like dealing with setbacks, how to set goals, how to stay motivated, and how to communicate effectively with other people. I use AI AI to help me read by using the AI text-to-speech on my iPhone. In accessibility on iPhone, there's a little menu called spoken content. And if you turn on speak screen, you can swipe down with two fingers in any app and it will read out the screen for you. I use it with the Kindle app. And so when I swipe down with two fingers on the screen, it starts reading it to me at 3.7 times speed. The reason that this is so good is that now I'm in the habit of listening to books at 3.7 times speed when I'm traveling from home to uni. This is around one and a half hours every single day that I would have otherwise spent probably listening to music or just driving in silence. I still sometimes do those things when I'm driving to be mindful, but I find that listening to books is also quite an enjoyable activity that I've gotten used to on my drive. Since I've trained myself to listen quite quickly, I can actually finish a book in around two to three days and I do 
find that I am able to remember most of what has been discussed in the book. Doing this has allowed me to read incredible books like Building a Second Brain, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and The Psychology of Money that haven't just helped me with my studies, but with my whole life in general. The third way that I use AI to get ahead in my studies is by facilitating critical thinking using ChatGPT. The problem with the way that most students use ChatGPT is that they use it as a way to almost completely skip the entire learning process. If you use ChatGPT to write notes for you or to create Anki cards for you, you'll find that you're not learning anything because you're using ChatGPT to basically completely replace your brain. The way you can use ChatGPT to study more effectively is to use it to direct your learning in the most efficient way possible. Let me show you how. So for example, I'm currently studying cardiology, so medicine to do with the heart, before my cardiology rotation in the hospital. So what I might ask ChatGPT is to tell me what are three of the most important ideas in cardiology and how they relate together to get an idea of what it is that I might want to study first. So what it's told me is that there's blood circulation, electrical conduction and rhythm, and then coronary circulation and heart disease. And so I want to sort of study the conditions a little bit more because I also already somewhat know the electrical conduction and blood circulation stuff. So now I might ask it to give me a little bit more specific stuff relating to the diseases. So now I've asked it to tell me three of the most important groups of diseases and so it's given me ischemic heart disease, heart failure and arrhythmias. And even at this stage I could probably decide to just study each three of these things individually but I want to go a little bit deeper because I want to get some more connections and more things to relate to here. Out of these diseases the one that I'm most interested in studying at the moment is probably heart failure. So I might look at finding out what diseases might be related to heart failure that I can study alongside it. So here again, it's given me five diseases and then of these, I think one of them was mentioned before already, ischemic heart disease and coronary arter artery disease, they're both the same. And there's hypertension, valvular heart disease. So all of these things are sort of giving me an indication of the things that I could possibly study together with heart disease. But then I might just ask ChatGPT to regenerate the response to see if it gives me anything different the second time. I often find that to get the most out of ChatGPT, you just have to be patient and be willing to regenerate responses and also to edit your prompts to get more specific responses from the program. I think it's given me the exact same stuff. So I might just try writing a new prompt to try and figure out maybe some more things that might be related to heart failure. Here I've changed it up a little bit to ask about five rarer or more unique conditions because I often find that I really like thinking about those rare or random or quirky conditions that somehow relate to really big and important conditions like heart failure. And so here it's given me quite a few interesting things. I've actually heard of Takotsubo before, so that might be something that I want to study alongside heart failure just for interest sake and to make me more curious about everything. Now the second time it's given me amyloidosis as well, and that isn't something that I would have thought of by myself, but now that ChatGPT's brought it up, I'm thinking, okay, maybe that is something that I could study as well. So as you can see, using ChatGPT in this way allows me to think of many, many different conditions that I could study alongside the main one that I'm studying to help me build a broader base of knowledge and also to stay more interested in the topic. Using ChatGPT in this way doesn't just apply to medicine, it can apply to any subject that you're learning because regardless of what you're learning, this thing that you are learning at any given time will almost certainly relate to many, many other things that you might also be required to learn at some later point. Doing this also means that ChatGPT is helping me learn the content in the most efficient way possible with the most important conditions first as opposed to anything else. When you start to use AI like this, you'll find that you actually are helping your brain learn as opposed to just getting AI to replace everything that you were doing before. And if you're doing this, you'll definitely want to know how to focus and avoid distractions, which you can find out in this video here.